Darcy Archer is a total bookaholic. She's even named after her mother's favorite Jane Austen character. She works at a bookstore with her friends Josh and Catherine, and the store's owner Terence. When Darch goes to Terence with some peppermint fudge that her landlady made the night before, she finds him lost in thought and tense. Turns out that a competitor bookstore has stolen their idea for the Christmas party which is just around the corner. This angers Darcy, and she wants to take action. But Terence simply says that there's nothing they can do except continue with their own party. Begrudgingly, Darcy cools down. While at work, Catherine approaches Darcy, exasperated that Darcy once again turned down a perfectly nice guy after their date last night. Darcy's simple explanation is that the man wasn't a reader. Darcy loves books, and she wants the man of her dreams to be a mad reader just like her. She refuses to budge and change her mind, because she is perfectly happy waiting for that kind of man to show up. And so, surprise surprise, he does show up. Only the man is a stranger with a dog, looking inside the bookshop window. When Darcy sees him, she's taken by his handsome looks and gets lost in a daze for a second. They both smile at each other, but the dog takes his owner away before Darcy can have her cliché romance novel moment. But there's always a next time in romance novels. On her way home, Darcy stops by Luigi's restaurant, and the man greets her with a delicious meal, all packed and ready to go. He sells it to her for $5 like he always does, regardless of what he makes her. Darcy seems to have a very daughterly relationship with the Italian man. She has a similar relationship with her landlady, who is a Christmas fanatic. She's decked the halls with twice as many decorations. That night, Darcy curls up in her cozy chair under the pretty Christmas decorations of her room, with her favorite author's new release, when suddenly an idea strikes. The next day, Darcy dresses up Chaucer's bookstore with origami decorations that she made last night. But all her excitement about Christmas at the bookstore simmers down when Terence announces to his employees that he will soon be handing over Chaucer's management to someone else. He'll be retiring from the job to spend time with his grandchildren. Terence invites his employees to apply for the new store manager position, and everyone looks at Darcy. While everyone, especially Darcy, is sad about his decision, they support him. Darcy has a nervous breakdown as she rambles about how they might lose the store if Terence decides to sell it. Catherine assures her that someone worthy of the position will show up soon enough, and Darcy asks her to take it. Catherine refuses on account of moving on from this job very soon after her degree is over, but she suggests that Darcy should take it up, since there is no one who loves books and bookstores more than she does. But Darcy clearly says no, because she doesn't know anything about running a business. Just then, the cute guy from earlier shows up at the window with his dog once again. Darcy makes eye contact. They exchange smiles. That night, Darcy decorates a tree with her landlady and tells her all about her day. Mrs. Henley agrees with Catherine and tells Darcy to go for the job, because she has the most important qualification of all, she loves books. But Darcy is still not convinced in her abilities to manage a store all by herself. Mrs. Henley assures her that Darcy is tough as nails, and sharper than she thinks. She encourages her to take the offer, and while Darcy is happy to hear all the praise, she is still undecided. That night, Mystery Man wraps up a Christmas present for someone and curls up with Bailey on the couch, as he reads the same book Darcy's reading. The next morning, Darcy wakes up from a phone call and realizes she is late to work. She rushes out and gets on her bike, riding like Mad Max. On her way, Darcy avoids getting hit by a car, only to end up hitting the handsome stranger from the bookstore window, who is simply crossing the street and minding his business. Poor Darcy calls for the ambulance, and the handsome stranger is taken away by the paramedics. Darcy gathers the man's stuff and his dog, and heads over to the hospital to check on him. There, Darcy is denied any information on the man, despite her constant pleas. Instead, the nurse asks her to leave her number, and she'll call Darcy as soon as possible. With that done, Darcy ends up taking responsibility for Bailey. The nurse visits the sleeping mystery guy, whose name is a mystery to everyone now. They label him John Doe. On her way back home, Darcy stops by Luigi's, and the kind man offers to fix her damaged bike. He even offers her tiramisu, and some treats for the pup. Such a kind soul. Battered after a hard day, Darcy tries to sneak Bailey into her apartment, but Mrs. Henley catches her in the act. Darcy comes clean about her bad day, and Mrs. Henley lets her keep Bailey for the night. When Catherine comes over with doggy treats for Bailey, Darcy realizes she has the mystery man's mail and house keys with her. She checks for a return address on the envelope, and voila, she ends up at the man's house. Catherine and Darcy go snooping in after no one answers the door. Bailey dashes inside the moment the door opens and settles in his custom bed. Catherine finds a business card with the name, William Anderson on a desk in the room, while Darcy looks around the man's room. Darcy finds out that William is a PR agent, and finds a picture of a woman in his room, which she thinks is William's fiancée, or wife. They also find an overnight bag packed on the bed. The two women snoop some more, and Darcy finds her favorite author Anthony Cleaver Parks' book in the man's room. What excites her the most is the personal note by the author inside the book. Catherine jokes that it's not the closet full of cashmere, but a note in a book that got Darcy so excited. 
Just then, Darcy gets a call from Nurse Nancy informing her that the patient is awake and is asking for his dog. Darcy quickly heads over to the hospital with Bailey, who has special permission to visit his human. Nurse Nancy tells Darcy about the mystery man's condition. He's having some memory issues for the moment, since he took a hit to the head. The only thing the man remembers is that he has a dog named Bailey. He doesn't even remember his own name. A rush of guilt consumes Darcy when the nurse tells her about the man's retrograde amnesia. She assures Darcy that this is no reason for alarm, and the man might get his memory back soon, but nothing can be said for sure. Nurse Nancy lets Bailey greet the man, who responds very well after seeing his puppy. When she asks him about the name William Anderson, the man feels that the name is familiar, but he can't help but think his name is Aiden. Darcy chimes in, saying that his middle name starts with A, and could be that he goes by that name. This seems reasonable enough to Aiden. Nurse Nancy introduces Darcy and Aiden, and Aiden can't help but think of her as someone he knows. She feels just so familiar to him. Darcy tells him that she was the one who caused his accident and landed him in the hospital with amnesia. She feels extremely guilty and tries to apologize, but Aiden isn't holding a grudge. She rambles about how she snuck into his house, and Aiden, surprised by her confession, asks her about what she saw there. Darcy tells him about his job as a PR agent for a famous author, but Aiden has no recollection of anything. She tells him about the bag, and the picture of the woman on his desk, who she thinks is his fiance. Though Darcy notes that the man is not big on Christmas, made obvious by the lack of cheer and decked halls in his house. However, Aiden begs to differ. Darcy wants to help Aiden in any way, and he asks her to bring some items from his house so that they can help jog his memory. Darcy agrees to do whatever it takes to help him, and promises to come back the next day after work. Aiden asks what she does, and Darcy proudly tells him about her job that she so loves at the Chaucer bookstore. She offers to keep Bailey company until Aiden gets discharged. Darcy continues with her search for Aiden's family and friends. She tells Mrs. Henley how she's been looking him up on Facebook, but hasn't found a profile that matches yet. They catch up with Luigi on their way, and he gives Darcy her bike, good as new, and doesn't even charge her for it. Mrs. Henley and Luigi strike up a conversation and sparks fly. At the hospital, Aiden sketches a beautiful house that he keeps seeing, and Nurse Nancy tells him to keep drawing if it helps him remember it. Darcy and Mrs. Henley go back to Aiden's house and collect some belongings to bring to him. Mrs. Henley gets excited when she finds a gift certificate to the Nutcracker at Pennsylvania Ballet, and then she finds a gift wrapped box in the bag. Despite Darcy not wanting to invade Aiden's privacy, curiosity gets the best of her, and they open the box only to find a ring inside it. Darcy jumps to the conclusion that Aiden was about to propose to his girlfriend, the girl in the picture in his room. Meanwhile, Aiden complies with his doctor's requests and mental exercises. However, he feels sad about how everyone will be spending Christmas with their loved ones and family, while Aiden can't even remember them. He wants to go outside, but Nurse Nancy won't allow that. Darcy suggests that she and Bailey can keep Aiden company, and only then does Nurse Nancy allow him to go to the Christmas party in the lounge for the patients. When Aiden sees the stuff Darcy brought over, he recognizes his university hoodie, but the picture of the woman stirs no memory or emotion. But when Darcy shows him the ring she found earlier, a memory returns to Aiden. While taking a walk outside, Aiden tells Darcy about the ring. It was his mom's ring, which she lost when he was just a kid. Aiden goes on to recall that his mother passed away when he was still in college. He remembers his mother's name, and recalls when his dad called him to inform Aiden of her demise, but he can't remember his dad's name yet. Darcy asks him to take it slow, and assures him the memory will come back to him. But Aiden is panicked. He has a ring in his hand, and somewhere out there is a girl he loved enough to propose to. He's scared of what will happen if he's never able to remember her. Darcy calms him down and assures him that he will recall his life soon, and worst case scenario, if he can't do that, then he will make new memories. In the hospital lounge, Darcy runs into Mr. Farley, a regular customer at her store. Mr. Farley is here to see his grandson at the hospital. He tells Darcy that the little boy is upset about not being able to go outdoors and see the snow on Christmas. So Darcy, along with Aiden, gets to do some origami and makes paper snowflakes for the kids stuck inside the hospital on Christmas. Aiden is happy to help her, since any distraction helps him keep his mind off his own misery. He offers Darcy to let him know if he can do more to repay her kindness, and Darcy asks him for the Nutcracker tickets. She wants to give them to her landlady as a token of appreciation for helping out with Bailey, and Aiden instantly agrees to help spread the Christmas cheer. Back home, Darcy talks about her day with Mrs. Henley, and tells her about the tickets Aiden graciously gifted her as a thank you for everything. Mrs. Henley gets super excited and happy, because she was once featured in a production of The Nutcracker at the New York City Theater about 30 years ago. That's when she points at the picture of the woman on Darcy's phone, the one she found in Aiden's house, and recognizes the background of the NYC theater. According to Mrs. Henley's observations, the girl in the photo is a dancer too, as witnessed in her graceful stance and build. She even recognizes the pin on her lapel that
that reads Grand Ballet Company in New York. Darcy is so relieved to have found the woman. She discusses her relief with her colleagues at work, but the one thing she can't wrap her mind around is why the woman in the photo hasn't reached out to Aiden yet. Darcy had even left a note on the counter in Aiden's living room. Wouldn't a girlfriend be concerned if she hadn't heard from her boyfriend in days? She can't take help from Aiden and ask him to recall the woman's name, because that would cause him stress. Darcy has more problems on her plate than she knows what to do with. On Catherine's suggestion, Darcy decides to go to New York and stop by the theater to look for the woman in the photo. But her problems aren't solved yet. Books Books Books, the competitor bookstore, is going to have a Santa bounce house at their store for Christmas. This encourages Darcy to devise a plan of her own. She decides to send out an email blast to their mailing list that Luigi's Restaurant will be catering at Chaucer's on Christmas Eve. There will be Christmas carolers, and a surprise guest too. Though Darcy doesn't know who the guest will be, she's positive she will figure it out when the time comes, but that clickbait has to bring them more footfall. Darcy meets Aiden at the hospital with a muffin and coffee, and Aiden is grateful for the non-hospital food. As they get talking, Darcy tells him about her parents' accident, and knowing that Darcy is all alone in the world also makes Aiden sympathize with her. But Darcy assures him she has adjusted well with her family at Chaucer's. He then shows her the drawings he did from the flashes of memories he got earlier. Later, seeing Aiden play with the kids at the hospital stirs some feelings inside Darcy. The next day, while Aiden gets a day pass from his doctor to go around the city with supervision, Darcy heads to New York in search of Aiden's mystery fiancé. When she approaches the receptionist at the New York Ballet Theatre, the woman refuses to divulge information about their dancers to a stranger. But Darcy refuses to take no for an answer. She tells the woman about Aiden, and hearing his story, looking for lost love, melts the woman's heart. She finally gives Darcy the name and number of the woman in the photo, and Darcy sets out to find Melanie Porter. Since the woman is on tour, Darcy calls her up, but to no avail. She leaves a voicemail telling the woman about Aiden's condition. Aiden, on the other hand, goes to Chaucer's bookstore, where he overhears her co-workers talking about Darcy and the amnesia guy. Aiden then finds out that Darcy and her co-workers saw him a few times in the front window of the bookshop, and nurse Nancy thinks maybe he knew someone in the neighborhood. They go out exploring the area, when suddenly Aiden rushes into an antique jewelry shop. From there, he finds out that he visited the store in pursuit of finding his mother's missing ring. But when he tells the story to Darcy, it makes no sense to her. She recounts that Aiden was born in Ohio, and went to college there. He moved to Philadelphia at some point after graduation. And years later, his mother's missing engagement ring just magically showed up at a shop near his house. Something in the story doesn't add up, and just when Aiden thought he'd found a piece of the puzzle, he realizes he was just reaching. Darcy then tells him about Melanie Porter and wonders if the name holds any significance to Aiden, but the man can't remember it for the life of him. He's amazed to know that Darcy went so many extra miles out of her way for him. Aiden feels lost and sad, and wishes that he could remember the woman he was in love with. Darcy assures him with confidence that when he's standing in front of the woman he's meant to be with, he will know her. Aiden asks her something he'd overheard at the bookstore the other day. Why hasn't Darcy pitched herself for the position of general manager at Chaucer's? Darcy is surprised by his sudden question, but before she can respond, Aiden's doctor arrives and discharges him. When Aiden steps foot in his house, he can't help but feel like a stranger to the place. It doesn't feel like home to him, and the lack of Christmas decorations especially bothers him. But like the superwoman that she is, Darcy has a fix for that problem as well. She calls for reinforcements, and Mrs. Henley arrives with all her extra Christmas decorations to deck up the halls of Aiden's house. They all get to work on the house, and Aiden asks Darcy more about her plan for Christmas at Chaucer's. He suggests that for her surprise guest, she can use Aiden's help and invite one of his clients since he is a literary PR agent, but that plan falls apart as soon as he remembers he doesn't know any of his passwords. He asks her again about the position at the bookstore, and Darcy finally tells him that she's running out of reasons for not taking up the job. She doesn't think she's the type of person who thinks she's meant to be in charge, but Aiden reminds her that she is someone who knows what is to be done, and then gets it done. That is as close to great leadership as one can get. Darcy feels grateful for his compliment, and it's clear that she's crushing hard on the man. Later, after decking up the place and lighting up the tree, Darcy and Aiden talk some more. While recalling Christmas incidents from his childhood days, Aiden suddenly remembers a core memory. He was an art teacher. Suddenly, Aiden can see in his mind's eye a classroom full of students. He remembers he taught third through fifth grade, and recalls the time when his mother showed up to his class one Christmas. The song in the background feels familiar to him, and Aiden recalls having heard the same version at his winter formal dance in college. He quickly grabs Darcy for a dance and sways her around in excitement. He feels grateful to Darcy for being there for him every step of the way. 
The two share a close moment, and sparks fly. They're just about to kiss when the doorbell rings, and in walks the real William Anderson. Seeing William, Aiden suddenly remembers his real name. It's Aiden Harris. William is confused to see so many people in his house. He recounts the crazy phone call he got from his fiancée Melanie about how someone left her a voicemail saying he was the one who had amnesia. The confusion gets cleared up when William tells Aiden that they're old friends, and though Aiden resides in Ohio with his family, he was just crashing at William's place for a few days while in town to collect his mother's ring from the antique store. This puts the puzzle pieces in place, and everything makes sense to Darcy and Aiden. Aiden recalls his old life as a teacher, and while everything is coming together, Darcy isn't as happy as she thought she'd be. She heads out, and Aiden hesitantly follows her. She feels bittersweet. She's happy that Aiden finally remembers a major part of his life, but to figure out the rest, he will have to leave and go back home. It upsets her to let him go, but she needs to give him room to find out who he really is. Aiden doesn't want her to do that, but Darcy believes that whoever he wrapped up his mother's ring for is waiting for him to come and get her. She asks him to go back to his life, and promises to always be there for him as his friend. Aiden hugs her, and is about to kiss her when another interruption ruins it. But it isn't only Darcy who feels bittersweet about letting Aiden go, even Aiden has feelings he can't quite sort through yet. Darcy returns home, quiet and sad. Mrs. Henley can tell that Darcy isn't alright. Darcy confesses that this week with Aiden was the first time that she'd found her adventure outside of books, and realized that she is a little braver than she thought. But now that Aiden is leaving, that feeling seems to be fading as well. Mrs. Henley tells her that she had an adventurous week because she wasn't focused on her problems, but was focused on caring for Aiden. She asks Darcy to imagine what would happen if she helped herself figure out who she is, just like she did for Aiden, and that makes Darcy think. On the other hand, Aiden finds the perfect way to repay Darcy for everything she did for him. The next morning, Darcy walks into the bookstore with an urgent mission. Dressed professionally, she stalks straight into Terence's office and gives him a long speech about how she is the perfect person to manage this store in his place, because she is someone who not only loves books, but also loves this store. Terence wholeheartedly concurs. As Darcy continues to ramble on about her ability to solve a problem with her whole heart and focus, Terence stops her mid-sentence, already convinced to let her take over. He had always known that she could run the store, and all he was waiting for was for Darcy to believe in herself. He happily hands over the reins to her, and Darcy is ecstatic. Just a few seconds into the job, Darcy gets her first task when Catherine informs her that there's a call on hold for her from Anthony Cleaver Parks, Darcy's favorite author in the whole wide world, who is offering to do an appearance at their store on Christmas Eve. Darcy is happy and surprised, but she knows this is Aiden's doing. Meanwhile, Aiden returns home and reunites with his family, and his memories return. Back at Chaucer's, Christmas Eve celebrations are in full swing. Darcy has outdone herself with the decorations and the event preparations. Anthony Cleaver Parks arrives at the event, and Darcy is starstruck by him. But her excitement fades soon as she feels the absence of Aiden in her life. Catherine notices Darcy's mood, and when Darcy tells her how she misses talking to Aiden, Catherine reminds her that they are still friends, and Darcy can reach out to Aiden anytime. While that is true, Darcy just feels like she spent all her time thinking how Aiden wasn't the guy for her, because of his fancy life and fancy house and fiancé. But when his life turned out to be Williams and Darcy found out who the real Aiden is, she felt like she missed the opportunity to be with someone who she'd always wanted to be with. The event starts, and Darcy sees Bailey in the room. Her surprise becomes even bigger when she turns around and finds Aiden in front of her. Darcy's happiness reaches the moon. Aiden points across the room to his family, and tells Darcy how thankful they are to her for taking care of him. He then points at the woman far away who is wearing his mother's diamond ring, and tells Darcy it's his sister. Darcy concludes the event and everyone applauds her. Later, while looking for him, Darcy runs into Aiden's sister, Jenny, who introduces herself and her daughter to Darcy, and thanks her for taking care of Aiden. Now that Darcy knows the truth about there being no other girl in Aiden's life, she goes looking for him and finds him outside. Seeing him, Darcy expresses how she's been trying to differentiate between reality, and what she thought she knew. Aiden makes it simple for her by reintroducing himself as the real him, and through their fun little conversation, Darcy finds out that he is considering moving from Ohio to Philadelphia. He tells her that it's because of what a wise beautiful friend of his once told him, that when he finds himself standing in front of the woman he was meant to be with, he'll know who she is. There's love in their eyes, and in the air, along with that Christmas magic, as the two kiss. 